This deck is a thriller. After a couple lethal doses, I swear, this deck will probably have you zombified on the way it plays. I'm the Cali Effect, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. But more importantly, go ahead and that notification bell, because, well... We just too strong. Also want to give a special thanks to every single one of my Patreons. Without you guys, videos like this would not be possible. Also, a mad shout out to our newest Patreon, Wilfredo. Make sure you add yourself to that Discord as well as message me or Jest so we can get you into Top Dog so you can take advantage of all your rewards. And while we're here, there are still some really, really great opportunities for you to join the Discord as well. We will be running tournaments and giving away prizes for entrance. But without further ado, I present to you a competitive zombie deck profile for this format. I know you're the Discord in the black. Let me go mute it. Okay, guys, so before we get into the deck profile, let's take a look at these stats. I feel like zombies are in a very interesting position. You can play danger monsters, or you can play a danger zombie variant, but then you're better off just playing danger or gust. You can play a control variant, but you're probably better off playing a better control deck. What zombie does best is have a little bit of a mix of the two, being able to combo off when needed, but also having the ability to shut down your opponent in the most opportune times. I think that it's best suited for a regional level event at the highest, but I wouldn't blame it if it topped a YCS level. Starting off with the monsters, we run two copies of Doom King Balor Drock. So what this card does is that it can special summon itself to your side of the field during the standby phase if you control a field spell card, Cough Cough Zombie World. And the reason why this card is so potent is because every time a zombie monster activates its effect, you can either negate that effect or you can banish a card on the field. Um, Keep in mind, Zombie World does turn all monster effects zombie, so you're pretty much allowed to negate one of your opponent's cards or banish one card every time a zombie monster triggers. Two copies of Necro World Banshee. Uh, this card is insane. While it is on the field, which a lot of people do sleep on, your zombie world cannot be targeted or be destroyed by card effects. Thought I should just mention that, but its quick effect in the graveyard allows you to get quick access to zombie world. So basically, you get Banshee to the graveyard, and it gives you pretty much real access to your zombie world, which means Balladrock can then summon itself to the side of the field, thus creating a pseudo lock. Two copies of Glow Boom, just in case you guys thought the deck was done on being able to be being able to be consistent. Glow Boom does come into the fray when it's into the graveyard. You can banish it to add a lower five or higher zombie monster from your deck to your hand. Huh? That's not bad you can have Balor Drock. but if zombie world is on your field you can special summon itself to your side of the field instead it is a level one monster so it's easy to make or to send it to the graveyard if it's on your field make link Kribo, and it also allows you to get deeper into your combos three copies of Shiranui Solitaire. Actually, let's rewind back a little bit, talking about the Banshee and the Globe Boom. One would think that um, three copies of every single card would be a great idea, and on paper, it's a really smart idea until you realize that while these cards are very powerful, you don't want to have them in your hand and just sitting there and not really doing anything. Uh, the 2-2 ratio, I felt, was the best ratio, even without the uh, Vendrick strategy that I was running in the previous Zombie Deck profile, mainly because we have so many ways to get this into our graveyard and then other ways to manipulate it to keep our cards present uh next is the three copies of shirinui solitaire you guys should already know what this bad puppy does tributing him basically allows you to spell summon zoom unizombie to your side of the field but when he's banished you can spell summon one of your shirinui monsters back to your side of the field and we actually do play two inside of spirit master and samurai now <clears throat> There was a reason why these cards should probably be played in just every zombie deck, especially at least Sh uh, Spirit Master. So Spirit Master can allow you to spell summon a Shirinui monster from your graveyard or your hand to your side of the field. Him by himself, plus a Shirinui monster in your graveyard, is a free vampire sucker. But that's not the big reason why he's good. When he's banished, you can destroy a card on your opponent's side of the field. That That's like insane like it's a free destruction just by banishing this card and Shirinui Samurai allows you to battle any of your opponent's monsters if you banish a zombie monster he becomes a 2400 behemoth and he can banish any monster that he battles as well as trigger your spirit master or your solitaire's effect these two are very good cards and they really fit well inside of the deck three copies of Yuna Zombie. If you guys seen in our last build, we wanted to play two because we have so many options to it. Now we kind of need Yuna Zombie and we want it as fast as possible. So the 3-3 ratio was seen best. 
Only two copies of Mizuki. To be honest with you guys, Mizuki is a card that I think the deck can live without. Um, this deck isn't a synchro spam or link spam deck. It kind of just wants to sit on Vampire Sucker and summon Doom King Baladrock and then just control the tempo. If you guys want it, you can take out the Mizukis, and I know it sounds crazy, but you can take out the Mizukis for Gozuki or Vampire Frawlins because, to be honest with you guys, they still fit the strategy, maybe even a little better than these two. Nonetheless, these cards work well with Dangers and their Extender Zombie cards on their own. One copy of Gozuki, if you have Zombie World, this is essentially the exact same combo with Gozuki. Uh, three copies of Danger Mothman. Now, I did try to go in depth and test a lot of a huge danger engine with zombies and i had mixed results first of all i realized that danger or cuss probably just did exactly what this deck wanted to do but better but even more importantly it just turned into a danger deck so um we didn't really want to go that route we resorted just to running three danger mothman and this is the best danger to run i'm not running it because of budget or whatever the reason why it's so good is because it's a free level four monster to your side of the field if they don't hit it but if they do hit it you can draw a card and then discard a zombie monster that you need to your graveyard and gain their effects we followed that up with two copies of ghost bell and haunted mansion this is one of those expensive mandatory cards in the deck if you ask me uh mainly because just uh there's so many coal by the graves being ran in the meta there's so much graveyard manipulation and then the, the opponent is going to have cards like monster reborn in their deck ghost bell is almost mandatory you don't want to get caught with a coal by the grave against this deck you probably won't be in a good spot so ghost bell does make up for that two copies of ash blossom enjoy your spring um it, it's a it's a zombie and it it is good next is two copies of fanatical dragon phantasmite thanos if you guys would call them this is a 42 card deck and basically thanos allows you to reset your hand yada 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 it does all that good stuff if you don't know what thanos does by now he essentially is i don't i he's like a a card trader slash monster that gores slash can't be targeted like he's just good okay he's he's just really good and if you guys can't afford him don't worry you can drop him if you want to you don't have to play him you can play a third bell or third ash blossom hell you can play three dd crows and three ash blossoms for the people that are on a budget that is it for the monsters for the spells we run three copies of zombie world um this is the reason what makes the deck pop and if you guys haven't noticed a lot of decks cough cough sell them and great need their monsters to be a certain type well zombie world turns them all to zombies and i don't think they want to be zombies i think they want to stay cybers um and it also if you combine this with rivalry of the warlords your opponent can't summon monsters to the, or multiple monsters to the side of the field i don't main board rivalry but i definitely sideboarded reason why i don't main board is because when i was it just like it was another piece of the puzzle and if you went second it was just it was a mess let's just put it that way next is three copies of instant fusion now this is the card that i actually decided to take out uh for rivalry of the warlords instant fusion serves multiple purposes in this deck if you are going second you summon thousand eyes restrict you snatch your opponent's monster and you play Yu Gi Oh. if you're going first you summon millennium eyes restrict your you prevent your opponent from hand drafting you because that's pretty important and then you make your combo regardless instant fusion does also give you an extra monster to your side of the field in case you wanted to make a vampire sorcerer play or whatever your vampire sucker play or whatever you're trying to do three copies of call by the grave this deck hates being hand trapped and also being able to take advantage of salad man and their graveyard manipulation is pretty good uh monster reborn super polymerization Cards insane, uh, foolish burial, one for one, and the super secret spicy tech is terraforming. What I've noticed about this zombie deck is that a lot of times you'll have an option to send one of your zombie cards to the graveyard, whether it is your glow of bloom or your banshee, but not both, unless you're trying to get rid of a card in your hand. What terraforming does is mitigate you, mitigate the need of you being able to provide a monster on your filtered graveyard while still getting you to zombie world. I thought about playing two, but I thought one was a really solid spot and almost no time I drew terraforming, it was ever a dead card. Lastly, it's two copies of Shiri Nui style, Shiri Nui style Swallow Sash. What it does is that you contribute a zombie monster to destroy two cards on your opponent's side of the field. And then you can banish one Shiranui monster from your deck. Now, um, we have Shiranui Solitaire for the free special summon, but that's not why we play. You can actually banish three cards if you decide to banish your, where's that monster? Your Shiranui Spirit Master, or you can recur your Shiranui Solitaire if you just so happen to banish Shiranui Samurai. So this card works really well because it gets Doom King Baladrock off your side of the field, which you can spell summon back to your side of the field for Vampire Sucker. It also 
also banishes your spirit map or your samurai for you to follow up plays spirit master getting that true destruction or solitaire to get you more monsters on your side of the field that is it for the main board at 42 cards it could be 40 if you adopt the thanos uh for the extra decks i just play the borals because i mean i have them they're not really mandatory uh nightmare unicorn i mean I, that's that's a really good link but it's kind of good uh the nightmare phoenix and cerberus um you're gonna like you you kind of make these cards but you don't really make these cards to be honest with you guys um i wanted to run three vampire sucker three link Kribo, uh two millennium eyes two thousand eyes and i wanted to play um pot of extravagance in here because you don't need most of your extra deck but then i started to think about it i was like I ain't nobody got time for that i don't feel like looking for all those cards uh two copies of vampire sucker um, card this is the go-to link I'll show you guys in the combo and then two copies of link Kribo so your first link Kribo in theory is used for <clears throat> to make uh, use for your glow of bloom and then your second link Kribo is for your thousand eyes restrict or millennium eyes restrict um, sometimes you'll actually even summon both thousand eyes restrict and millennium eyes restrict in the same game and then that's where link Kribo does take up that space um, I think playing two was really good uh, starving venom fusion dragon I play Super Polymerization, Dragon Necro. This guy is a savage. Uh, you fuse two of your opponent's monsters because Zombie World's on the field, and then you summon him. You're going to win a lot of games because of that. This card is extremely expensive for no reason. Um, I wanted to run Sea Monster Theseus. I think I had it. I don't even have it to the side, but I wanted to run Sea Monster Theseus. Um, because it is a super polymerization target in theory if your opponent controls two two tuners you can super polymerization them and summon sea monster theseus but um reaper of the nightmare actually has real applications because after you use it for a link you can spell summon it back to your side of the field it can't be destroyed by battle it can attack your opponent directly and it can discard cards so it actually could come up uh thousand eyes restrict millennium eyes restrict and mud dragon swap instant fusion targets and a super poly target when you don't have your uh zombie world on the field that is it for the main board ladies and gentlemen I hope you guys are spooked enough because we're in March and it, it's nowhere near Halloween. But let me show you some awesome combos that this deck does have. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for the combos, the only thing you need is access to Unizombie and either Glow Up Bloom or Necro World Banshee uh, in your hand. And this was, it, it's pretty much the standard go-to combo. It's the card that you want to go to. So the reason why we play triple Unizombie, triple Solitaire, and we play two and two of each, I'm going to go ahead and say I have Glow Up Bloom in my hand for this sequence. What we're going to do is normal summon the Unizombie and then use its effect to send the Necro World Banshee from our hands to the graveyard. Banish the Necro World Zombie to activate the Zombie World, and then you can activate Unizombie to send the Glow Bolt to the graveyard to increase Unizombie's level. Use Glow Bolt banishing itself to allow you to spell summon Doom King Balardrock to your side of the field. And now, Balardrock and Unizombie can be used for a Link Summon into your vampire sucker during the your opponent's turn you spell summon that vamp or that doom king ballad rock to your side of the field and you're allotted to draw one card so basically uh two cards in your hand netted you a zombie world doom king ballad rock and a vampire sucker this is the most standard play the deck is very simple very basic and it does what it does pretty well Combo number two, ladies and gentlemen, is one for one and Necro Roll Banshee in your hand. You're basically going to get the similar result, and that's exactly what this deck wants to do. It wants to turn different combinations into the exact same result. I'm going to use one for one, sending the Necro Roll Banshee from my hand to the graveyard to special summon Glow Bloom to my side of the field. Banishing the Necro Roll Banshee, I can go ahead and activate Zombie World and then use Glow Bloom for a Link 1 summon into my Link Karibo. Now, Glow Bloom's effect is going to go ahead and activate it can banish itself to special summon a Doom King Balladrock from my deck to my side of the field. And now Link Kribo and Balladrock are going to be used for a Link Summon into your Vampire Sucker. On your opponent's turn, go ahead and special summon that Balladrock and then draw another card. It basically is the same combo over and over again. You're going to wind up with this. Combo number three is either Terraforming in Zombie World and Gozuki. Again, you guys, you won't believe what you wind up with. Go ahead and activate that uh, Zombie World and normal summon your Gozuki, sending the Glow Bloom to the graveyard, banishing itself to summon the Balor Drop, both of these monsters, for a Link Summon right into your Vampire Sucker. And then on your opponent's turn, you summon the Balor Drop and draw a card. I'm telling you guys. 
this is how many times you can do the deck it does the exact same thing over and over and over again and depending on your sequence it just gets a little different i mean instant fusion can be an exact same combo it's like it's just summon a monster didn't go from there but um pretty much i hope you guys get it i wanted to make this deck as standard as possible being able to get this on your board because it's a lot more powerful than what people think i basically only invested one card because i'll have four cards left in my hand in my opening turn and then five cards left in my hand if i am going second and you can just do so much more after that thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the cali effect i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did go ahead and give it a like and if you didn't let us know in the comment section what we could do to be better please like comment subscribe but most of all enjoy i hope you guys have a great day or a zombified day like i am